Welcome to the Level Up Literature Research Library Workshop. This is a recording, so thank you for watching. My name is Roxana Cruz, and I am an SMC librarian, and I'll be leading you through this workshop. Okay, so you were assigned a literary analysis assignment, but you don't know where to start. This workshop will walk you through the process, such as brainstorming, selecting search terms, database searching, so you can find acad academic sources for your topic. But first, let's watch this video to give us an idea of how to dig deep while we read. We often hear that studying literature involves finding a deeper meaning to a text. When writing about literary works, we're expected to mentally dive below the surface in order to come back up with big ideas. But you may find yourself looking at the flat page of a book, wondering how deep it can really go. How do we reach those ideas that turn into great essays? Well, there are two crucial thinking steps that can lead us in the right direction, practicing insight and acknowledging complexity. Insight is the ability to arrive at an intuitive understanding of a big idea using only small clues to get there. If you're practicing insight, you'll be able to use observations about character behavior to figure out their true emotions and motivations. Pay attention to little things because they add up to what is really meaningful. For example, if you consider a character like Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice, who openly declares his dislike for Miss Lizzie Bennet, you might at first assume he's just a mean guy. But using your powers of insight, you're noticing other smaller things. How Darcy's eyes linger on Lizzie's face and how he seems all flustered when she's around. Add to the mix your knowledge that Mr. Darcy is in a much higher social class than Lizzie, and your sense of insight should be telling you that there's something more here. In this case, it will tell you that Darcy's surface behavior is in conflict with his true feelings of attraction, because the difference in wealth between himself and Lizzie makes him feel that it'll never work. Thinking about all those small clues gives us insight about some of the big abstract ideas within the novel that we can approach in an essay. Appearances versus reality, the power of wealth and social stratification, and the unpredictable nature of love and attraction. Look at that, deeper meaning. The second step to a sophisticated analysis is acknowledging complexity. Let's face it, in both life and literature, situations are complicated due to social forces like relationships, moral codes, personal desires, and power structures. This means that there are, at any given time, multiple factors that shape what is true. In order to acknowledge complexity in your writing, refrain from making broad generalizations about a text or establishing quick, simple judgments about a character. Explore each facet of your subject carefully and make sure to consider multiple influences on events. Explain the tension of multiple forces that create the story. For example, a basic analysis of Toni Morrison's Beloved, where the protagonist has killed her own child rather than allow her to grow up in slavery, might sound like this. Setha murdered her own daughter. This act was wrong and causes the ghost of the child to haunt her throughout the novel. These observations are simplistic. They don't acknowledge all the different forces that contribute to what the character has done. Try something like this instead. A culture of slavery disturbs the ability to determine what is morally right. Setha's past experiences with violence reinforce the fear she has for her child's fate and transform the murder into a protective act. As the novel progresses, Setha is haunted both by the angry spirit of her daughter and by the memories of everything else slavery took from her. Here, we see those influential forces at work, and we've shown off our ability to understand the complicated nature of the human experience, which again allows us to access those big ideas that reveal the deeper meaning of a story. Ideas in this case, like the parameters of maternal instinct, the consequences of injustice, and the question of whether or not ethics can even exist in a corrupted moral system. It's impossible to sit down and write an amazing essay about literature without first thinking about it. Before you hit the keys, go back to the text and fish out the small moments, the complicated moments in the story. Line them up in your mind, practice insight, acknowledge complexity, arrive at some big ideas. Before you know it, the deeper meaning will be close at hand. Great. So I hope that gave you um, ideas of how to get started. Um, so just to just quick overview. So the video wants us to practice insight, right? Which means observing the character behavior within the, the text, um, trying to discover what their true emotions and motivations are, 
um, and acknowledging, acknowledging that there's complexity, such as multiple, inf um, multiple exterior influences that, that might influence an event or force a character's actions. So keep those things in mind. Okay, so where do you find the information? Well, first, you'll want to find the start with the text that you're reading for your class or the one that you're asked to create a literary analysis of. So you want to draw your own interpretations, um, you know, and understand the complexities of the writing. And then you want to move forward with reading the literary criticism that exists on that piece of work, um, which is written by experts in literature, philosophy, sociology, and other fields that pertain to the content being critiqued. Um, they come in literary criticism, come in a variety of schools or types, um, develop within different fields. So it depends on what your instructor asks you from uh, for. So um, make sure you run that by them or ask questions. Okay, so once you read the text, and gone through it and sat down with and try to process what you've read, you want to brainstorm what you know and what you discover while reading. So this is where we, we encourage you to map it out, either in a, a scratch piece of paper or however you um, prefer to brainstorm. Write down what you know about the novel that you read, um, the complicated moments, the small moments as the video recommended, what point of view the story is being told and why that's important, where it takes place, um, either the location or the time period, what, what's the genre of the, the book that you're reading or the, um, the cultural lessons that are being, um, that author is trying to convey, and who are the characters and why they're important, what, are, uh, what makes them different from each other and what stands out about them. So, Laying out what you know will help you um, um, come up with a research question or a topic idea. So I, I, I recommend doing this. And it also gathers your thoughts and helps you digest what you read. And from this brainstorm, it's so easy to select, it's so easy to come to an idea that you want to explore further, and that will help you select your search terms. So the databases um, are not as smart as Google. They, you can't type in a question and expect it to bring back results that match it. You actually have to use keywords. So you want to identify the main ideas of your um, topic or your research question. This can be you can start as simple as maybe you want to find sources on the author or the literary work that you just read um, and tie it to the characters or the theme. So we're going to start very simply with these examples. Um, we're going to practice, we're going to do a quick search using Toni Morrison. Um, we can either, you know, she's written so many books, we can either focus on Beloved, which the video discussed, or The Bluest Eye. We can explore um, themes that have to do with slavery, racism found in her book. So that's one jumping off point. So I encourage you that when you pick your topic, select your search terms. And those are the, gonna be the terms that we input into the database and I'll show you why. Okay, you also wanna do some background reading. I know we all wanna just jump into the research and just get started, start typing up our work, but I really encourage you that after you select your topic, do some background reading. Read about what, what's written about the work that you're analyzing or the author. And then you might find that you might have to tweak your research question a bit or your thesis statement based on what you discover. For example, this will help you um, help introduce the topic and provide a quick overview. It will also help you select additional um, search terms that you can use or switch out with the ones that you've picked. Sorry, I can't find my mouse, there it is. 
Um, it can provide important names, dates, places, and people related to your topic. It can lead you to other sources through the bibliography of the articles that you read or the books that you read um, or from the recommended reading section. So take your time, make sure you give yourself enough time to be able to take your time to explore your topic um, and develop your research question. All right, so let, we're gonna start the search. I'm gonna demonstrate how to do a search in the library's um, databases, but we're gonna start first with one search and then we'll jump into the databases. Um, I'm going to pause this recording so I can switch over. So I'll be right back. Okay, let's say you're at home and you go to your computer, go to SMC website. This is how you get to the library's homepage. You go to student support, then library, and it should take you here to our homepage. In our, on our homepage, you'll see this one search box. This one search box um, is linked to our library catalog and also um, our some of our databases, not all, but some of them, and some of our digital holdings as well. So you wanna make sure um, that you do an additional search outside of OneSearch, like going into a subject specific database, not just stick to OneSearch, although you can find a lot, and this is a great place to start when you don't know which database to start with or where to go. Um, okay, so let's get started. So let's say I wanted to find articles or any books on Toni Morrison. I would just enter their name, Morrison, comma, Toni, and then click enter to search. So this gives me a 7,384 results. This is a lot. We have a lot on Toni Morrison, so that's great. However, going through all the pages and all the results is going to take time. And some of the stuff might not even be relevant to us. So maybe we want to narrow our search. And one way you can do that is by using the refined results on the left-hand menu bar. Here you can use the filters to take away the stuff that isn't relevant to your topic. So let's say I wanted to um, just focus on books. I can go to format and then click books apply filter and now I have 243 results it means we have 243 books on Toni Morrison maybe I want to narrow that search a little bit further I can go to subject maybe I want to find just a literary criticism written about Toni Morrison perfect I go down the list and I can browse through the subjects and here is literary critic criticism so I don't have to type in it I can just select it and apply filters and there we go. Um, there's other um, options that you can use depending on your topic. You might want to narrow it down by publication date, especially if you're doing like a science research because you might want to read the most current stuff unless you're doing some kind of historical review. If you're getting results um, in different languages, you might want to also narrow your result by language. And if you don't, if you can't come to campus and you prefer to just read um, online um, resources, you can also narrow it by available online. And that will just give you um, eBooks and articles that are um, that you can access online without having to come to campus. All right, so here we are. Now we have 39 results. Perfect, this is a much manageable number. Um, and so you can, let's say I wanted to read her biography, I can do that. Or we can continue reading through the titles into something that stands out or is related to our topic. So maybe you wanna look at Toni Morrison's Beloved and its origins. If you click on the book, it gives you the book's record. Um, it tells you where to find it on um, the full text, which is found at EBSCO eBook Collection Database. And if you're off campus, it's gonna ask you to log in. This is to verify that you're a student here at SMC so make sure it, it's the, to, to log in, it is the same login used for Canvas or Coursera Connect. 
And then if you scroll down, it gives you a quick description of the book like that. Um, you can read through it and decide if this is relevant or not. You can continue. If you want to, if you really like this book and you want to find other books that are in the same subject, you can click on these subjects that are hyperlink, which will take you to other books tagged with the same um, subject. Okay. You can also um, create a citation from this. Um, this one hasn't been updated to MLA 9th. Eighth edition seems to be the most recent. So you might want to um, clean it up when you copy it to your bibliography because it, clearly it's a little outdated. Also, our citation generators are not perfect. So you always, always, even if you see the most recent style, you always want to look over it and make sure that it's correct. You can also email this book to yourself um, in case you want to read it later. So let's click on it um, on the database that houses this book. Okay, so now it takes, so now I'm at the ebook um, collection of EBSCO's, EBSCO. And again, quick details about the book. I can scroll down and go to the table of content, or I can click on the PDF full text. To view it, I can scroll through the pages. I can also search within the book. Let's say I'm looking for themes or something specific, I can enter it in there. So I was looking for slavery. It pulls up the pages that contain my keyword. You can also add notes and you can print it. You, there's a dictionary link to it. Um, you can save it to your Google Drive. And let's go back. Pretty neat, right? Okay. Let's exit this book and go back to the list. Another cool feature is, let's say you're browsing through these 39 results, but you don't have time to look at every book um, closely. You can always link, click the boxes. And then you can email select it and then review it at your, at your leisure. Um, if you, let me exit this. If you check out a book that is physically um, a print book from the library, and those are the ones that are labeled main stacks, and then there's an alphanumeric number, which is the book's address on the shelf, the call number. Um, if you check one out, you can always renew it if you need more time by going to my account, logging in, and then renewing it for an additional two weeks. So these books check out for two weeks, and then you're um, allowed to renew once more for a total of four weeks. Okay, so let's go back to the library's database. Oh, wait, before I leave, um, let's remove the book filter option. And let's say you were looking for peer review journals. There's also that option that you can click by filters. And here are all the peer review um, journals that discuss um, to talk about Toni Morrison. If you want to edit, add, and beloved her book, you can enter and the keyword and to tell the search engine that you're looking for Toni Morrison and beloved, not one or the other, but anything that contains both these keywords. And then go back to the peer review um, filter option because every time you create a new search, it actually erases your. Um, previous filter, so remember that. Um, you'll have to do it again. You'll have to click it again. You click, now we have 400 results. Still a lot, but it's a more manageable number than we had before when it was in the 2000 range. So you can read through these um, and find, um, and you can, read by clicking the link, you can read a short description of the article. You can also see other articles that this was cited in. Oh no, find sources that are citing and cited in this in case you want to 
um, mine through the bibliography for additional resources. When the arrow's um, this way, pointing up, it's find sources signing this. So you can click on that and find additional sources that cite better. So it's a great way to link you to other sources that are that could be relevant to your topic. All right, so let's go back to the library's homepage. So that's one search. You can find books, ebooks, journal articles, videos, and so forth. Um, great place to start if you don't know where to start or if you want to get an idea of what we have in our collection. Also, if at any point you're ever stuck and you need any assistance or have any questions, and you need to speak to a librarian and you're not on campus, you can always click on this box and it'll enter your question, enter your name, and you can talk to a librarian 24 hours, seven days a week, live. It's an actual person, not a bot, who's on the other side available to assist you. Outside of our library hours is going to be a librarian from another institution who's covering for us. During the library hours is gonna be one of us. Okay, so let's go to the databases. So under the one search box, we have these buttons, databases. And our databases are organized um, A through C. And also there's options up here. You can go by database type or subject. So if we go to literature, it'll give us the top um, databases. Well, the, the databases that um, this, the database, sorry, the databases for literature. Um, so the one that I recommend getting started with is Gale Literature Resource Center. And if you see under here, there's a description of each database letting you know what's contained. We have the new play exchange, but it just focuses on plays and scripts and so forth. Um, we have Comic Plus. So if you're into comic books, graphic novels, and you like to read them, um, or if you're analyzing one, and you want to see if we have it, Comics Plus is the, where to go, the place to go. Or if you just want to read on your free time, you, as a student, you have access to, this, uh, access to this database. So take advantage, explore it, have some fun reading. Um, Glee Edition it focuses on drama, novels, short stories. Um, and then there's also Miguel on Literature Plus, which contains biographical essays. Um, so you might want to, if you want to read a little bit more about Toni Morrison, this is probably the place you want to go. But for our full text criticisms and up to date biographies, we're going to go to Literature Resource Center. Okay, once here, um, they always have a feature author. So, it's, so if you have some time and you want to explore other authors, this is a great place to start, or um, if you want to get an idea of who to write about. There's also additional. Um, tools to make the searching process easier. You can find a, a use this topic finder um, feature, pretty fun, um, play around with it. Um, but for this presentation, we're going to use the search box. It's a very simple one box, but if we had additional keywords and um, we can use the advanced search. And then multiple um, search boxes appear. So we can start with Morrison. Tony, and then Beloved. So keyword, name of work. Oh, actually I answered that incorrectly. So I have to about name of work. So you can adjust these drop down boxes based on what you're looking for. And then search. But before you do that, you can also look um, scroll down and use the rest of the filters. For now, I'm just going to keep it simple, just as two keywords and then search. All right, so we got 101 literature criticism on Toni Morrison's Beloved. This is great, especially if this is your topic. Um, you can browse through it, read the description, or you can filter your results by subjects, publication title, name of work, so forth. You can also use these um, filters on the top. If you wanna just look at literature criticism, you can browse through the list. If you want to look at her biographies, you can switch over to biographies just by clicking. Um, but let's go back to literature criticism. Let's go with the first one. 
So you click on the title and it takes you to the articles page. Um, it gives you the information in case you need it for your citation, but it also has the citation generator embedded. This is the ninth edition, but as you can tell, um, it's not properly formatted because it's not double spaced. It does have a hanging indent, but you still have to clean it up um, and look it over. So please make sure to do that anytime you use any of these citation generators. You can also download it or you can print it. You can also highlight and make notes. So let's say you wanted this highlighted and enter a note. I'm gonna put, you can do that. You can switch colors or if you don't, if you accidentally click it and you don't wanna highlight it, you can trash it. Well, I wish it would. Oh, I see, delete. I had to scroll up. Okay, you can also save it to Google Drive or your OneDrive, read through it. It can also read it for you. So a lot of cool features in these databases to make your um, literature research a bit easier. Again, if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, contact a librarian, we're happy to help or ask your instructor in case you're not sure about using um, an article or depending on what requirements are asked from you. There's also primary sources and literary works, reviews and news. Um, let's go back. So let's exit. This is Gale Research, Gale Literature Resource Center. All right, so let me pause the recording while I go back to the slide. Um, okay, so um, I gave you a quick demonstration of how to use OneSearch and how to use Gale um, Literature Resource Center. Um, sometimes there'll be depending on your topic, you might want to explore other um, general, um, not general, but other um, subject specific databases. Um, one that we recommend is JSTOR, it has back issues of over 300 scholarly articles, um, journals in the discipline of African-American studies, um, African studies, anthropology, archeology, span art, and so forth. Um, this one's great. Um, we, and I'm gonna demonstrate it um, in a bit. I just wanted to go over the list. Uh, academic search complete master file complete is also a really good general um, academic database that you can use is multidisciplinary. Um, so it has a little bit of everything. Um, so if your topic um, goes beyond just literature, we, I encourage you to explore these other um, databases. There's also current biography. So if you want to learn a little bit more about your author, um, maybe their work is influenced by their life, you want to tie back to that, um, we recommend using current biography. There's also communication mass medium in case you wanted to tie the literary work to the film adaptation of it. Um, so again, if you have any questions or you need a recommendation of which databases to use, read through the list or ask a librarian, we can point you in the right direction and help save you time while you're working on your project. Okay, so let's look at JSTOR real quick. Okay, so going back to our A through C database list, let's go find JSTOR. If we go to JS, here it is the only database that starts with a J. So to click it, to get to it, we have to click it. So it takes us to the search, advanced search page, which is great, especially if you have multiple keywords, saves so us the, the time from going back to this section, we can just get started here. So let's say we were looking at um, themes of slavery and we love it. Um, Morrison. So I write, I type in um, Tony Morrison's name, Morris, a uh, last name, 
comma first name because most of the databases uh, organize it that way, search for it that way and understand it in that format. So give it a try, but it'll also catch it if you do it the reverse version. Okay, so we can also continue to go down here and narrow our search further. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna submit that search. All right, so we got 2,225 results on slavery and um, themes of slavery and Toni Morrison's Beloved. Um, this is great, but it might be too much to manage. Um, there's no way we all have time to read through 2,225 2, results. Um, so we can continue to narrow um, by journals or even by subject. So maybe we wanna just, um, Folk, um, look at um, African American studies. Have um, African American study articles, journal articles that talk about Toni Morrison's beloved. So now we are down to 386 results, which is great. Um, let's say this is the one that I like. We can download it again, cite it. Here are the different citations. You can copy and paste. However, again, I will remind you, please look over those citations. They are not perfect and the citation generators make a mistake. So please make sure to look over that. Okay, so let's say this is the article that I want to view. I just click it and it brings me to this window. It gives me a quick overview, a uh, quick look at it. I can go through the pages, but it'd probably be easier just to download it um, and view it that way as, like, instead of having it in this view. Excuse me. All right, so let's go back. Um, and again, you can narrow by language. I just want um, to remind you guys that you don't have to just stick to what the results, the search engine gives you or the database gives you. You can always refine your results to get closer to the items that you're looking for or closer to the sources to talk about your topic. Um, don't waste time browsing through thousands of results. Play around with the filters. It'll save you time. It'll narrow your search and it'll get you closer to what you need. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so going back to the library's homepage, there's one more resource that I want to point you to and that's our research guides. So these guides are curated um, based on subject, also topics or general purpose. Um, this is, these are great um, to give you a, a roadmap to where to go and how to use the library resources or even online resources. So we can go to English and literature and here you will find the guide that goes over library services, um, how to avoid academic plagiarism and what academic integrity is all about, how to choose a topic, how to write a research paper. It also walks you through how to find articles and also has the recommended databases. Um, it goes over the different types of sources um, to help you distinguish between them. It also goes over how to find books or eBooks and there's videos um, to walk you through that in case you forget, or you could also um, just review this one and how to use web resources um, and how to evaluate those when you're online, how to verify their authority or their accuracy um, and so forth. There's also the um, chat box embedded into the research guide in case you need um, and in case you have any questions or need any assistance, it also goes to the MLA style. It also has our MLA citation workshop linked in and our handbook. We are, um, we now have the MLA handbook online, so you can review that if you have any questions. You can look at some work cited um, and look at other um, resources that go over citations. So, uh, don't go at it alone. We're here to support you and help you um, through this process. Research is basically trial and error. We try one idea and we test it out. And if it doesn't work, we adjust it um, based on what we find or what we read or discover. Um, 
So yes, don't get discouraged. Keep going. Ask questions. We're here to help. So now let me go back to the slides. Okay, so just to remind me again, um, we have 24 seven live chat with a librarian um, using the, oops, using the chat box, let me go back, using the chat box found on our home page or a link in our research guides. Um, you can also come into the library, we're open Monday through Friday, well actually Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Friday from 8 to 3. So um, you can find a librarian at the reference desk. And again, we're always happy to help. So please stop by and ask questions or chat with us online. Thank you again for watching this workshop. Um, in case you're receiving extra credit for this assignment, for, review for viewing this workshop, the code word is Goldfinch. All right, well, happy researching. And please, again, don't forget, you can always reach out to us. We're happy to help.